never like the one you do. Do see me with the crew. I gotta get some food. I see you looking like you do. Had to make a move, make a move. Tell I gotta glow in a Jimmy Choo's. Break the rules. No, you're not a fool, but I'm in the mood. What's up, y'all? Snade Almighty, aka the Global Dark Skin Ambassador, with another kinda records on the story, but more specifically. A New York City street gangster story. Let's talk about the brother Rod Diggs from Brooklyn, New York. Okay, now, upon doing my research for this brother, I came across several interesting things. More specifically, two stories that I'm gonna relate to y'all before I go ahead to uh, Wikipedia and another website and um, give a little bit more detail into the charges that were brought upon this man, what he got convicted for. Um, apparently he has like three life sentences and he's like in um, the same kind of like max, probably not the same exact jail, but the same kind of max that they got Larry Hoover in. It's called um, the ADX Max. In uh, Florence, Arizona, I believe. Don't don't quote me on that. But um, the first story that I want to talk about is how uh, apparently he had the option to have rapper Jim Jones out of Harlem killed, but spared his life. So how this story goes is that you know this was around 2010, right? Where um. Rod Diggs, who was in the process of what he would say was um, going legitimate and um, beginning a rap career. By the way, I, I, I wasn't listening to Rod Diggs' music before I was on his research. And come to find out, um, he definitely has bars. Definitely has bars. But apparently, like I said, um, he was ripping and running, mingling with a few artists. Um, most notably, um, he has the most tracks with rapper Uncle Murder. Uncle Murder is another um, artist out of Brooklyn that got bars. And he ended up in a studio where Jim Jones was in. And Jim Jones, you know, being a dude for the Bronx, you could say, Jim Jones got on his Harlem shit, you know? And he basically disregarded Rod Diggs and his people as if they were nobodies. I don't know if maybe he was just feeling himself that day. Maybe he just didn't know Rod Diggs or did not know of Rod Diggs like that, who was supposed to be his fellow blood homie anyway. You know, of course, different sets and stuff. And, you know, they from two different boroughs, but, you know, they both was blood. And apparently, Jim Jones basically kicked Rod Diggs and his people out of the studio Basically saying, get that blood stuff out of here. Basically, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, basically looking down on them, treating them like they wasn't important. And um, Rod Diggs and his people felt some way about that. And allegedly, Rod Diggs knew that after the studio, Jim Jones would be in this strip club, this very known strip club in the Bronx. I mean, I think it's in the Bronx. Or oh, it's in New York, you know what I'm saying? I've never been in a particular strip club, but it's called Sue's Rendezvous in New York. Rod Diggs knew Jim Jones would be in this place. And how the story goes is that Jim Jones seen Rod Diggs and his people when he got into this club. And uh, he basically was shook, how the story goes. And they said that he looked like he seen a ghost. And he basically decided to um, humble himself in the presence of brother Rod Diggs. And he walked away and separated himself from Rod Diggs. And it was peaceful that night. I don't know if Jim Jones directly left the club after that or maybe he stayed in the club for a little while, but how the story ended is that the whole time an associate of Rod Diggs was basically looking for a wink, maybe, 
or some kind of head nod or some kind of cue that would give his people the permission to shoot and kill Jim Jones. And Jim Jones could have been dead that night and ever since. Now, um, that story right there, although, of course, I wasn't there and I don't know nobody involved to know if that story was correct or not, but if this story is correct, you know, that just shows the power and influence that man had, that people were, were literally willing to throw their lives away and murder a rapper and also a member of the same gang over, you know, the brother Rod Diggs. You know, that just goes to show, like I said, the power and influence that man had. Um, Another story. Okay. This story right here basically says that there's a there was an informant who helped him get convicted because, by the way, everything he got convicted for, the murders and stuff like that, they didn't they didn't catch anything on him. He didn't personally murder these people, but the paperwork says that he had people killed. Now, this particular person was an informant, and and the informant alleges that Rod Diggs told him that I need this guy killed. And this was over drugs and he needed a man killed who was told and warned not to sell drugs in a particular project building. And that person didn't listen. So Rod Diggs, who was the leader of everyone says, hey, listen, um, I need dude killed and this is how you're gonna do it. You're gonna put on a dress in a wig, right? And you're gonna catch this man slipping at nighttime and you're going to take care of him. So once he gave that man that directives, this guy who they say was over six feet tall, over 300 pounds, put a dress on and a wig, caught the guy slipping, murdered him. And then just like an episode of Power, he put all his clothes in the bag, set it on fire, disposed of the evidence. And um, that's Rod Diggs for you, um. If you allow, if you believe all the stories, then um, you would believe that this man was a very dangerous man, um, quick to murder, had people killed, more than one person, and he was the leader of his own blood set and a criminal drug organization. And it's as simple as that. Now, now, Rod Diggs also is apparently either the first rapper or one of the first rappers to be basically convicted off of lyrics from a rap song. Now he has a rap song that came out like 11 years ago with a rapper that goes by the name of Waka Flocka Flame in which he basically says that he got shot and the dude that shot him got murdered two days later or got shot two days later. And basically anyone attacking him is basically, they might as well commit suicide on themselves. But without further ado, let's see what the website Wikipedia says about Rod Diggs. He began a career on November 25th, 2008, creating a YouTube blog channel called Rod Diggs TV. It had over 400 subscribers and 62,000 views as of August 11, 2021. Going into his imprisonment, Rod Diggs was arrested on October 5, 2010 on drug charges and was alleged to be the leader of the Bloods affiliated murderous Mad Dogs. He was convicted on June 26, 2014 of 21 federal charges, including racketeering, drug dealing, and three murders. At trial, several of Rod Dick's songs and music videos were used as evidence because they were literal recountings of his crimes, the federal prosecuting attorney says. On April 2nd, 2015, he was sentenced to three life terms plus 105 years in prison. He told the judge that he could give him 10 life terms and that he was only going to die once, after which he was sentenced to 12 life terms plus 105 years in prison. 
He is being held at ADX Florence in Colorado. I said Arizona, but it's Colorado. I mean, hey, but yeah, you know, um, one thing judges hate is people who, who, who basically act like they don't care. If they was gonna give you 10 years and you act like you don't care about that 10 and the 10 is light and they can't give you five more years on top of that, instead of the 10 they was gonna give you, they'll give you 15, you know? Like, that's what judges do. You know, that's why when you locked up, if you, if those of us who locked, who been locked up before, you know that your lawyer's gonna tell you, hey, um, make sure your hair's neat, make sure you dress properly, make sure you're speaking well, make sure you don't have a nonchalant attitude, you know? But let's keep going. On April 8, 2015, Harris sent an appeal to the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, claiming that his conviction violated his constitutional First Amendment rights. The conviction was upheld on February 14, 2019, with the court saying that his First Amendment challenge was meritless because here the speech is not itself the prescribed conduct. Now, my final analysis of this situation is this. Um, uh, if Rod Diggs, if Rod Diggs, since Rod Diggs has been convicted of these things, um, you can call it like it is, you know, um, the brother was a criminal. The brother was a criminal, um, but I believe that nobody is ever truly fully good and nobody is ever truly fully bad, you know. Um, I'm sure that the brother Rod Diggs had people to take care of, children, you know, um, his mother, um, his, his his homies, um, his people who he grew up with, his close friends and relatives, you know. Um, um, the thing about life is the choices that we make when faced with adversity. And some people choose to go one route when faced with adversity. Other people choose to go a different route. And, you know, unfortunately, Rod Diggs chose a route that never works. And if it works for anyone, it doesn't work for people who come from the same type of backgrounds like we do. I mean, if you look at his influence um, and you look at the fact that he was good at rapping, you know, this is clearly somebody who, like I'm always say, if his environment was different, he could have still been a leader of men. He could have still been, you know, an English professor maybe, or, or you know, a businessman, you know, like drug dealers sell products. If you can sell drugs, then you could easily start a legitimate business and sell t-shirts, socks, hats, uh, toilet tissue, anything, you know, um, but being from where he was from, he thought the best option for him was drugs. And what comes with drugs and what comes with, you know, the need for money and power and not never having nothing, very bad decisions like murder come with that. And um, the man did his crimes, didn't snitch on nobody, got snitched on, didn't go Nino Brown at the end because he got snitched on. He held it down and he's still holding it down, you know, and um, and through it all, that's something you can salute, you know? He did his thing in the streets, he had his time, and when it was time for him to go in and, 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 and face the judgment of his actions, he took it like a man. Not like the dude who gonna go through all the trouble of dressing like a whole woman Right, killing somebody allegedly for him and then telling, it's like, not only you an informant and you told on, on, on a lit dude, you know what I mean? Like, you done put on a dress and all that for him. But hey, this is what happens when you choose a street life. If you're a youth watching this, don't take the easy way out. And by easy route, that means being stereotypical and doing what they expect you to do. Being who they expect you to be like when you come from these type of environments. Always choose to show your greatness. It's in you. 
Like, share, comment, subscribe. Peace.